Welcome, everybody, to another show of the Allen and Aaron Sports Talk Radio Show. We got a great guest for us, us today, Victor So Sweet Tony. We're going to go ahead and talk to him. He got a fight this Saturday. Let's see how camp's going. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and let you know this interview is sponsored by Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. So thank you so much, Chef G, for being our sponsor today. Go ahead and FLBBQ, FLBBQ.com and get yourself a four pack. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on our guest. All right. Can you hear me, Victor? I see you, but I guess you can't hear me just yet. So. All right, Victor. I think you're on mute. There we go. Okay, great, great, great. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, folks, we got Victor So Sweet Tony in the house today. So glad he could take a little break and talk to us on the Allen and Aaron Sports Talk Radio Show. So first and foremost, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Just a little finishing touches. Yeah, wow. It. No, I appreciate you too. I really do. I know you got a big fight this weekend, so we're anxious to talk to you. And for people who don't know, you work out of Youngstown, Salem Boxing. Please let us know how it is in the town of Youngstown for people who don't know. How is it living in Youngstown? Youngstown, I mean, it's rough, man. You know, it's like uh, any other inner city, small town hustle. Uh, got your hard working label folks. A lot of trouble you can get in, so you just got to stay to yourself and, you know, keep your nose to the stone, stay on your grind, keep positive people around you because negativity is around a lot of corners in your time. Yeah, it does sound like it's uh, not the easiest place to live for sure. So definitely I'm glad that you made it through those troubles and you made it to the boxing world. One of the things I did want to kind of touch on is that, you know, I'm an all-pro dad team captain. and I know that you and your parents split at the age, young age of seven. How did that affect you at that point in your life? Uh, I kind of grew up in the boxing gym. So, like, my dad had big aspirations in me boxing. But once they split, it was, like, it was pretty It was pretty rough as far as, like, my attitude kind of changed towards just society in general. It was, like, once I didn't have my father in my life, well, he was he was kind of in and out my life. It was like it was more room for error. It was more room for uh, negative influence. So uh, my mom, she wasn't really looking forward to me boxing. So I wasn't, I didn't really have nothing to focus on because boxing was like my main focus as a young kid. So it was like I started acting out in school. I started getting suspended. I started fighting people in school for the smallest little things, and it just, it just was, it just was hard, you know. Yeah, definitely. Sorry that you had to go through that. You know, that's one of the unfortunate things, and why you know being a couple and being a dad and a presence definitely makes a difference. And you explained that really well there. You know, now that you're boxing, you got the name so sweet. How did that name come about? Um. I was on the phone with a late, I was talking to a lady friend and it was like, cause I, I respect women, you know, like I'm a feminist. So I respect all women, you know, they bring life into this earth. So, you know, I respect them with the utmost. And she just was telling me how sweet I was. Like, you're just so sweet. She's just so sweet. She just kept saying it. And it's just, just like, it, it like kind of clicked. It was like, Am I so sweet? And I asked her, like, am I so sweet? Like, I'm really sweet? She was like, yeah. She started explaining how sweet I was. And I was like, I like the way that sounds. 
<laughs> I was like, Tony, that sound good. I was like, you mind if I use that? She was like, yeah, it's yours. It's you. I was like, all right, I'm going to run with it. Yeah, it works out great. Victor's so sweet, Tony. And definitely, you know, you, you definitely got an up-and-coming boxing career. I know the, the last one of the fights you had was with Sebastian Fandora. Definitely one of the big names in the sport. Tell us about that experience fighting Fandora. Uh, that was a learning experience. Yeah. I was out in Vegas, you know, swimming with the Sharks. And I had uh, got a few guys on my team that didn't have my best interest. Okay. So um, I was I was scheduled to fight another guy, Will Clemens. Then two weeks before the fight, my my trainer had hyperextended my elbow. And he was a he's a world class mitt man. So when he did it, it kind of felt like he did it on purpose. But I was I was so into making it and fighting through the pain, being tough. You know how they try to raise you, go, you know, fight through it, grind. You, you know what I mean? You don't want to miss no opportunities to start in the third. And I was out in Vegas on my own dime. Wasn't nobody sponsoring me. And at the time, I was out there for maybe like seven months. And this is going to be my first fight after bending out there training with the new trainer and everything, new gym. And two weeks before the fight, they switched my opponent from Will Clemens, who was about 5'8 at the most, to Sebastian Fundor, who's like 6'6. Yeah. yeah. So I saw his footage. And this was early in his career. He was maybe 4-0. He didn't fight nobody. A couple tuna cans. And I saw he was he was too flat-footed. He was pretty slow. I'm like, man, I'll be able to box around him. I'll be able to survive, you know, with the, with the, with the hyper-extended elbow. And, you know, I'd take the fight. Then they came. They were talking about the fight. They offered me some money. I said, yeah, make them go up a thousand. And we'll see what they talking about. Because still, you're on mute. OK, yeah, Sorry you're good that. now. What were you saying? Back up just a little bit. You were saying, because you went on mute. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. I, I, don't, I don't want the. The listeners that missed what you were saying yeah, or went on mute. Tried to come in. Okay. Oh, I can't hear you now. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so just with like the last 15 seconds before, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Okay, so um yeah. I was a little I was a little concerned about the hyperextended elbow, but like I said, I was out there on my own dime. So I was like, you, if you, if y'all can put up another thousand, I'll take the fight. And they did. I needed the money at the time. So I'm like, all right, cool. They want this fight to go down real bad. Yada, yada, yada. I'll take the fight. We, uh, we get to the fight. Everything's, you know, everything's normal. Everything's kosher. And he's like, uh, he's like this real cool, calm, selective guy, wear glasses, real respectful. I liked him, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's boxing, it's a business. So I still was in the mind frame of, you know, we're going to get in there, we're going to work. So the first round, so the first round come in, and I was working his body. I was on the inside, and he, like, he, he, he south fall. So with being that I hyperextended my left-hand jab, I decided to go south fall with him. And use my right as a jab. So I'm mm -hmm. be able to spin jab with him, go to the body with my lead hand, and then I can disguise my left hand in it. So it was working. Mm -hmm. And so he threw a loop, he threw a nice crispy hook, he threw a nice crispy right hand hook on on my injured left hand. And when he threw it, it, it came like around my guard and he hit me in the orbital right here and fractured my orbital bone. So the first round, it was a good round, it was close. 
That was that was his biggest shot of the of the round. But I did a nice little body work to slow him down. But as soon as I went to the corner, my eye closed it. Mm. So now I'm fighting with one hand and one eye. And from there, it was just I was just all body attack, all body attack, because he had the range. You know what I mean? And he was flat footed and he had to set up to get his shots off. So I was just working the angles from the south ball with the right hand lead and just circling these to his left, my right. So I'm mm-hmm. just working the body, moving around. So at this time, his 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 energy level is starting, starting to go down every round. So he's now he's wanting to work the jab and keep me away from him. But I'm still slipping in, getting to the body. So it was only it was only a six round fight. And it was it was a it was a real good fight, real close fight for me to be fighting with one eye and one arm, and they gave it to him on decision. So, and you can't find no footage of that, yeah, because they don't they don't want they don't want you know other fighters to see what blueprint it was or how I was able to survive in there like that against all those odds. So it was just like that situation. Because I didn't know who he was at the time. You know what I mean? Nobody knew he was going to go and blow up. But after the fight, I wanted him to be successful. I wanted him to climb up the rank because it was like, against all those odds, I still went the distance with him. He couldn't stop me. So he then went on, and he's stopping all these good guys. And people was like, they constantly bring him up to me like, man, you went six rounds with Sebastian Fondor. Like, how did you do it? And it's like, hey, I mean, just a normal day at work for me. Normal day at the office. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. I mean, you're 100% right. I couldn't find any footage on that fight at all. I searched and searched and searched. And you're right. For some reason, that's weird that somebody, especially in the boxing arena, would, would have some footage. But no, I couldn't find anything on it. It's a televised fight, too. Yeah, that's that's really weird. You know, that's 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 odd. But you are right. You know, people who don't know Sebastian Fondor is six six, so he definitely isn't the normal fighter that you would see in the ring. Yeah. yeah. So um, that is one of the things that's ironic about your next fight here with Troy Isley. Uh, it's ironic for a few different reasons. Number one, you know, shout out to top ranked boxing because. I actually, you know, we actually at the Allen and Aaron Sports Talk radio show, you know, we had a full media pass to one of his fights when he fought, you know, back in October in Atlanta. So I was actually, I actually watched one of his fights ringside, Troy Isley I'm talking about. And, you know, what are your thoughts about Troy Isley? Troy Isley, uh, he's a good fighter, good pressure fighter. Good mm-hmm. boys, relax, uh, puncher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uses like the uh, bully guys with his power. Um, he's technical in his approach, and I respect him as a fighter. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing, and one of the things that's the other thing that's ironic about him is that one of his idols is your cousin James Lights Out Tony. Talk about James Lights Out Tony and how you look up to him as a boxer. Being that's the first first professional I ever saw. Yeah, you know, like just sitting down with Pop and he's just breaking it down to me like it's your family right here. Mm-hmm. I want you to pay attention to the shoulder roll and see how he glanced. Because me and my dad, we would go over things hands on, but it was different seeing it in the light, seeing it perform mm-hmm. on a high level. And it was just like, you know, he looked like me. My dad always told me from a little kid, he was like, you're going to be my middleweight. You're going to mm-hmm. be about 5'10", 5'10 and a half, 5'11". You're going to be about 160, 160. And I'm like, and I'm a little kid. And I'm just listening. Like, I don't I don't really understand everything that he's saying. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, I was just taking it in. It's just like, as I grow and I can see like my physique and how James was when he first started. He started off at 54 and worked his way up to heavyweight. And it was just like, 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 man, like, it's like a, almost like a movie. Like, mm-hmm. like, 
I remember hearing all of these stories and watching him and just being exposed to the fight game at a young age and just loving it. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that was all we did. Like, me and my dad's bonding was boxing. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, James was definitely a big influence because, you know, seeing him on the TV screen, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're talking about it. We're in the gym. My dad got the mitts. We got the gloves. We can drill this and drill that. But seeing it on the TV screen and hearing the people cheering and looking at the building, you know what I mean? It just was like just the, the real growing up and just walking in the footsteps right now. Yeah, and congratulations to James Tony. He just recently got inducted to the Hall of Fame. So props to him on that. And that's your first yeah. cousin. So that's that's an amazing accomplishment, you know, with uh, Troy Isley, one of the things that did stand out is that he does, as you mentioned, he's a very technical fighter. He does have a lot of amateur experience. Do you think that's going to play a factor in this fight in any way? For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, with the amateur circuit, we fight guys from all over the world. Yeah. Being, I mean, if you're international, you fight guys all over the nation. You make it to nationals, but he made it to the Olympics. He's a yeah. silver medal, but he fought guys all over the world. So when you are in the amateurs and you really can't prepare for any one style, you got to focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. So he has a he has a compact style that works for him. So I just plan on him just coming out, being himself, yeah, and me being myself because I don't have a I don't have a typical style that you'll see from any guy from anywhere in the world. So my thing is just to make it difficult to him by just being me, being unique, being different, being something he ain't never seen before. Yeah, you definitely are unique and different. You, it's almost seemed like when, when, when you're boxing, I kind of get the feeling of like an Adrian Broner kind of vibe to it. And he's from Ohio. Is that something that's by design or that's just coincidence? Uh, I appreciate that uh, comparison because I love Adrian Brunner, you know. Yeah. He, comes, he, comes, he comes from nothing, you know what I'm saying? All those antics, all those uh, rambocious, uh things <laughs> like on TV and stuff, that's that's real. That's really him. Okay. But um, the Midwest, like Ohio, we do have a slight style. Yeah. So it wasn't purposely, because, like, I was boxing before I knew Adrian Brunner, so... And then you got the Aaron Pryor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's a lot of greats that come out of Ohio. And when you're athletic, mm -hmm. you know, we have an athletic style. So I think that plays a big point of the comparison between me and uh, Adrian Brunner. We're both athletic. Yeah. And, you know, you got shorts, very similar short styles. <laughs> you know, these shorts. But that's that's cool that. You know, another person from Ohio like yourself is representing, doing big, and and saying that. How do you feel you're going to do in this fight on Saturday? Uh, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to, it's going to be the best performance I had. It's the first time mm -hmm. I had a real, legit training camp. I went down in Florida for a few weeks. Got some good sparring down there. Good sun. Nice sweat. Weight on point. Everything's just on point. Everything's aligned you know, for this moment right now. So, you know, it's, it's going to be some fireworks, man. It's be some fireworks. <laughs> yeah, like what I, I, I definitely got the impression that Troy, like you said, he comes out looking to box. He's not, he's not holding his hands, basically. He's, he's throwing those hands. That's, that's for sure. And he's got, from what I see, a lot of power. And he, you know, he's, he's been in the ring. Well, one thing I would say is, he actually said he fought Fandora like you, and he said he did a, a lot of to the body that helped him. Do you feel as if, you know, hindsight being 2020, the body work was the thing that really helped you? Yes, Fandora? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Stick Definitely sticking to that body. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, you know, your team, you mentioned them. You have Moyet Flowers. Talk about your team a little bit, Rocky, and also. I'll say it, yeah. Talk about them. Yeah, the DeFranks. Yeah, DeFranks. Yeah, I got a married couple on my team. So yeah. 
I love Factor is beautiful in the gym and just every day talking and interacting. The wife of a uh, Rocky is a uh, Alicia Dufresne. She was Alicia a, a world class amateur fighter. She um she's very technical. She uh been all over the been all over the country, you know, learning and critiquing her craft. So she brings the technicality to the aspect and just making sure I fix my mistakes and that I can notice others' mistakes and capitalize on those mistakes. And, um, but like I said, she was a world-class amateur fighter and, uh, you know, Rocky was there with her every step of the way. They had been married the entire time. And, um, but in the pro aspect, you know, it's like a, it's like another switch to the game when you go from amateur to pro. And I had one fight with them as a, a pro, which and it resulted in a third round knockout, which was great. But um, that first that first fight that we had as a pro it was like it's kind of like um kind of like bringing out a new bike and putting on training wheels and you uh don't really like the training wheels you want to take them off because you want to be a big kid but you know you've got to keep them on so you can be able to steer and be comfortable on your route. So on our route, we were real comfortable and Coach Rocky and it, it was their idea for us to take off and go to Florida. Okay. For this training camp, so it was Rocky and Alicia's idea to basically take the training, take the training wheels off, and go down there and meet up with some, you know, official, some official heavy hitters in a pro game. Mm-hmm. And uh, Monet Flowers, he got got over thirty years in the boxing game, very knowledgeable, very calm, cool, collective like myself. So when we met up, it was like a match made in heaven man we just click just okay. real subtle real technical uh real consciousness of every little thing that's going on inside and outside the ring so we just gelled man it was like it was just it was made for us to all be together me the different and monet flowers and uh, a few other names in the background we're not that we're not gonna mention <laughs> you'll see a team pretty soon coming up because we're going. We're going to change. We're going to change the game of boxing. We got. I got something. I got something to bring to the table that a lot of people ain't never seen. And it's and it's uh it's unique in the game because it's evolving. Boxing is evolving, and it seems like people trying to hold on to the past and keep it a certain type of way. But you just, you just gotta you just gotta let it be what it's gonna be. You gotta let the stars be the stars. You know what I'm saying? You got to let the up-and-coming guys be the up-and-coming guys and just let everybody just go instead of trying to hold them back like they're trying to keep boxing on the leash. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And and speaking of that, I'm in Florida myself. I live right here in Brandon, Florida, by Tampa. What part of Florida did you train in? We were down right, right around Tampa, right around your park. Okay. Oh, man. We just miss each other. So, uh, Trinity. Trinity. Like okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Great. Right. So, yeah. So that's awesome. And what are some of your long term goals in the boxing game? Now that you got a great camp, got a great team, what are your long term goals? Multiple built in uh, multiple weight classes. Um, bringing some respect to the Tony name. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're not a boxing connoisseur, and you don't know James Tony, you can say whatever you want about him if you see some of the outlanders interviews he had or <laughs> some of the screaming matches he got with guys or you know what I mean? You gotta understand where he came from. You gotta understand the type of mind games he was playing with guys. Because he used to get in guys' head and talk crazy to him. And it yeah. was it was part of his style. He was a shoulder roll style. He wanna get you to throw your big shot. Yeah. So he can roll and then come back with something. So it's, it was an art, you know what I mean? The shirt roll was an art, and it was more than just physical. It was mental. It was the timing, like the reflexes of everything. So if, like you said, Troy Isaac said James Tony was one of his biggest guys, that's because he's a student of the game. So mm-hmm. if you're just a fan and you're not a student of the game, you might not understand who James Tony is. Yeah. So another long-term goal of mine is just to get an understanding of what the Tonys brought 
to the game of boxing because he changed it in one way and I want to change it in my own way. That's absolutely right. And you're right about that. James Tony is a legend in the boxing, Hall of Famer. I actually purchased one of his shirts. He was appreciative of it. It was, if you look at our Facebook page, you can get the link to purchase and support James Tony and his t-shirt. I wish I would have brought it here. I never showed it to you here on camera, but I do have a James Tony shirt. So big props to James, lights out Tony. And definitely you got a big fight this Saturday. This is going to be 10 o'clock Saturday, ESPN and ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus, yes, sir. Yeah. And you're going to be the undercard, so, so people who understand that, Teofimo Lopez and Campa, you're going to be the undercard. Do you have an idea where you're going to fit as far as, you know, the ranking of the fights? No, sir. Okay. It's, uh, it's on the undercard. You know, they, like I said, I, I learned from that Sebastian, they do swing bouts. It could be televised, swing bout. They not want to televise it. You know, I have no control of none of that. But they say for sure it's going to be aired on ESPN Plus. Yes. So those who don't have ESPN Plus, sign up and get it. I have ESPN Plus on my phone and also on my regular TV. It's a great app. You know, it's real easy to download, very reasonable. You get to see these great undercards like, like yourself and others, and it's well worth it. So ESPN Plus, if you don't have it, download it now and sign up so you can watch Tiafimo Lopez, Pedro Campa on the card. And it's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. That is Pacific time. But again, you're in the undercard, so it's going to probably come early. So just keep an eye out for that. Yes, sir. But it, it's going to be a great fight. I mean, this is going to be an outstanding fight. Two guys who I respect a lot. And definitely I'm going to be watching. Anything you want to see, say to your fans or people who have an interest in this fight? Uh, just all my family, all my supporters, all my loved ones. I just appreciate, you know, all of the good positive influences that I have that just tell me keep going constantly on me about if I'm still boxing, if I'm not, making sure I'm staying out of trouble. I just appreciate it. And anybody who's just now tuning in who doesn't understand who Vic Tony is, I'm super dedicated. You know, very hard working man. I'm I've been doing waterproofing. I'm talking about concrete floors, breaking them up, haul out gravel. You know, doing them basements, doing that outside in that hot sun. So you know, I'm a hard working. I've been putting in that work. I've been putting in them hours, and it's gonna pay off. Oh, it's, so it's gonna pay off. Yeah, I'm excited about this fight for sure, and. I think you do really well. I wish you the best of luck and and definitely let them know how to follow you too on your like social media pages and things like that. Oh uh, yeah, you can uh find me at Vic, that's B I C Tony, T O N E Y on Facebook. And from Facebook, you can get to all of my other platforms. Okay, great. And definitely we're gonna do that. We're gonna follow you. And also, real quick, do you prefer Victor being called or just Vic? How, however it rolls off the tongue you know people <laughs> you know, they, they like might like Vic sound better Victor might sound better other people but you okay know, I, I go by Vic Tony Vic Tony there you go so make sure you watch Vic Tony this Saturday continue success you know I see the bag there I know you're going to be hitting that some more before you fly out to Vegas safe travels best of wishes in the in the ring and we'll be praying for you to do well, really well. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Definitely. Thank you for joining us on the Allen and Aaron Sports Talk Radio Show. And may God bless you and your family. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye now.